Good morning. Uh, today's devotion comes from the Bible reading that uh, many of you know that I do on a, on a regular basis. So I've been going through currently the book of Kings, and it, it began really with a, a glorious time in the history of God's people. You might recall that, you know, the Israelites were in the desert and God was going to bring them into the promised land. And indeed, they crossed the river. Again, God dried up the river and the Israelites crossed on dry ground and, and they entered the promised land. They conquered the promised land and uh, God now had his people in, in the land that he had promised them. And David uh, ended up becoming king and uh, was, a, was a great king, did a lot wrong, but had a heart for God. And because he did a lot wrong, God did not allow him to build the temple where God's presence would be known and where the sacrifices would take place in Jerusalem. But David made the plans and Solomon took over his son and built uh, the temple area in Jerusalem. And the beginning of Solomon's reign was absolutely incredible. Uh, Israel was as prosperous as really it ever was as a nation. Um, The the skill and the organization that Solomon had, not only in building, but just running Israel, was quite amazing. People came from faraway lands to hear about his wisdom, and they were just amazed at how they would see him even just organize a meal and have everyone uh, serving and providing for the meal. He just was, he was really an extraordinary leader in many ways. But unfortunately, even though everything was going great and God's people were on top, Solomon fell away from God and got involved with uh, sexual sin and had lots of concubines and different wives and did not honor God in the way that he, he lived his life as it relates to his marriage and as it relates to women. And unfortunately, when Solomon died, uh, the kingdom was divided. Uh, he had two sons that took the kingdom and, and divided it. Uh, Jeroboam went to the north, and that was now called Israel. Rehoboam was had Judah and Benjamin, two of the tribes of the twelve, in the south, including Jerusalem. And God's people were never together again. The kingdom had, has been divided ever since. You might not know, or maybe you do, the history of Israel that Israel became divided as a as a nation at that time, and it didn't actually become a nation again until after World War II and all the persecution of the Jewish people uh, by Hitler, which then allowed the world and really God to use that to bring favor to Israel. And then Israel became a nation again in 1947. It hadn't been a nation uh, for thousands of years. It's amazing even that Israel is a nation again. But what I wanted to talk to you about is just the sadness of this country and this people on top, prosperous, things are going well. And God got them started and things were progressing, but sin got in the way of what God got started. And I I just think that that's a, hopefully a, 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 a warning that can be looked at from a positive sense for us is that, you know, uh, we got started in our journey of faith and, and God has good plans for our lives. And as we live to honor him, I really think God blesses us. I think that doesn't mean that everything goes right, but even the things that don't go right with God in our lives, things go better than they would have otherwise. But God has gotten something started in us But sin tends to wreck what God's trying to do in our lives. And, man, that's sad to see. And you see that in the world today. You see people maybe who have started their journey in Christ, but then fall away and don't follow God the way they should. And sin gets entrenched in their lives and destruction takes place. And praise God we have a God of of mercy. And if, if that happens to be you or Lord willing me one day you know uh, repent you know turn back to God and uh, he can restore what the locusts have eaten in our lives but Lord willing when we get started on our journey of faith and we're walking with God that we we don't allow sin to wreck what God is doing 
in, there's a parable in the Bible. You might recognize it as the parable of the sower. It's in three of the synoptic gospels, meaning Mark, uh, Matthew, and Luke. And there's a sower. Uh, really could picture it as the Lord Jesus, and he's he's sowing seed, and seed is falling on all different types of ground. And uh, let me let me just read a portion of that. This this is going to come from. Uh, I'm going to take Luke's version from Luke chapter eight. And I'm just going to go right to the, the punchline, so to speak, of when Jesus explains the parable to his guys. and Because he, he shows this parable of sowing seed, and then later the disciples are like, well, what does that mean? And his disciples began questioning him as to what this parable meant, Luke 8, verse 9. And he said, To you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is in parables, so that by seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. So that, that word of God is going out to folks, and, and those beside the road are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart, so that they will not believe and be saved. And you know, some people hear the word and just doesn't stick. You know, the devil's not allowing uh, uh, them to believe. Maybe they're not earnestly willing to seek God. But then that's one type of soil that the seed fell on. Then it says, and those on the rock are those who, when they hear, they receive the word with joy. And these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of temptation, fall away. So they maybe get started in their journey but something happens in their life that maybe doesn't go right and they they don't stick with what has begun. And the seed which fell among the thorns, these are the ones who have heard and as they go on their way, they are choked with worries and riches and pleasures of life and do not bear ripe fruit. And there's definitely something to be said that you know once we begin our journey in Christ, the more that we can be in the Word and in church and with fellow believers and mature in our faith and really grow a strong foundation, then we can bear what God has called us to bear, to bear good things, to bear good fruit, to, to serve His kingdom. But if we start getting distracted by the world, again, what God started, sin can wreck. And then finally it says, But the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the Word in an honest and good heart. And hold it fast and bear fruit fruit with perseverance. And what a beautiful thing that is. With perseverance, holding fast to the word of God, really maturing in our faith, saying no to sin, not allowing the world to distract us. And we produce something that, that's good, not only in this life, but in the life to come. And that's where God desires us all to be. You know, there's a mystery in the Bible, and it really comes up a lot. You know, you might think of a passage in Philippians chapter 1. It says, where he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. And I celebrate that verse, right, that any of us who've really gotten started in Christ, that God is going to help us to mature, to bring our faith to completion. And I believe God is faithful to doing that. The question is, is what if man is not faithful? You know, what if man gets distracted? What if man falls into sin? What if man turns away? And in a sense, you have two competing thoughts there. Well, God's going to bring it to completion, but then we have this parable of the sower where people got started and, and didn't continue. And I think, you know, I, I don't think I have to explain that mystery. That comes up a lot, you know, in, in my preaching, and I think it's, I guess, just humble biblically to think that way. So I celebrate, you know, that God is with me and is going to help me bring my faith to completion, to to live for him to the end. But I also have a a reverence and a respect and and a realization that as a human, there's a concern. Uh, that I need to guard my faith, that I need to hold it tight, that I need to say no to sin. So just because God is promising to be there with me, which is great, and I celebrate that, I don't want to take that for granted and not see the responsibility that I have as a man of God to say no to sin and and to see what God has started in me to, to partner with him in bringing that to the full. So, you know, the Israelites, 
had a great start, but they they fell away. May we not be like that. May we see everything that God wants us to accomplish in life, and may we trust him to help us, but may we also say no to sin, and may we be that fertile soil that continues to build a strong foundation in Christ. Don't give up. Let's keep following Christ to the end. Say no to sin, and let's see all that God wants to do through us. Amen? God bless you all.